Well, praise the Lord, everyone. Paz de Cristo, hermanos, and bienvenidos a nuestro estudio en esta noche. Praise the Lord, everybody, and welcome to our study um, tonight, our Wednesday study. Um, we look so forward to it, myself and, and our teachers. We look forward to um, coming on and just having these really, really good discussions. Nosotros, the maestros de Dios, um, estamos muy contentos con estos estudios porque hay este tiempo para hablar y estudiar y en esas discusiones que Dios sabe que ayuda mucho, mucho. So, um, gracias por estar con nosotros. Thank you so much for, for being with us. We want to welcome all of our friends as well, uh, that um, our surrogate uh, central members that uh, tune in with us. God bless all of you. Thank you so much for your support as well. And just um, hopefully we could be a, a blessing to, to you. Um, but tonight, um, our subject is, is based on Mark chapter 12, verses 28 through 31. Nuestro estudio en esta noche es si buscamos en el libro de Marco, capítulo 12, versículo 28 a 31. Nosotros queremos hablar de eso. Eso es el tema por todo el mes, porque hay mu mucho carne aquí. Si puedes comer un poquito de uh, uh, hueso también, para, you know, por hay, hay mucho aquí para estudiar. There's, there's so much here that's, um, uh, that's uh, for us to study and hopefully be, be, be an encouragement to, to all of you. But um, before we get into the study, I, I'd like to just have everyone um, introduce themselves. Uh, and of course, just uh, give a give a greeting. Amen, paz de Cristo, hermanos. Les damos las gracias una vez más porque se conectan con nosotros. Nos sentimos muy agradecidos de que ustedes están acompañándonos en este momento. We'd like to thank everybody for joining us again at this moment. We're so, so grateful that that we get to share this time with all of you. Um, one of the sisters just just sent me a message saying that she's really looking forward to to give us a hug and 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 with the same with the same heart we feel that we should give everybody a hug and, and, and our desire is is that great and nuestro deseo así es de grande de abrazarlos a todos y una vez más estar reunidos pero sabemos de que Dios tiene un propósito para este tiempo y y aquí estamos una vez más junto con ustedes listos para gozarnos y a uh, y partir el pan verdad como dijo nuestro pastor este huesito del que vamos a hablar tiene mucha carne y va a estar muy sabroso you know this little this little chunk of chunk of uh, or what I want to call it, this little little bone that we share with everybody has has a lot of meat on it so we're gonna be able to to really uh, uh, get most of it so uh, thank you all for joining us hello everyone praise the Lord Gustavo here uh, it's great for to be in this platform again, sharing the word of God with you all. Uh, muy contento de estar aquí con ustedes en esta plataforma, compartiendo la palabra de Dios con todos ustedes. Uh, si tienen preguntas, escríbanlas. Y vamos, nosotros vamos a andar, cada uno de nosotros vamos a andar monitoreando, viendo. Y Dios nos da uh, la oportunidad de, de, de ayudar, aclarar algo. Aquí estamos para servirle, por favor. Uh, uh, comparta con nosotros y participen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Good to see you all, or I guess see all of you popping up on here when you guys do. I'm looking real forward as we keep constantly saying for when we can all be united in person again. But at the same time, I'm also really enjoying this time for us to just dissect scripture together and us to just get into the word. Like the brothers are saying, you know, there's a good chunk of, you know, that meaty scripture that we're going to get into today. And I'm just looking forward to it. And to reiterate Gustavo's point, if we have questions or comments, feel free to post them and we'll try to get to them and we'll make sure that we read and respond to them. Amen. Amen. Paz de Cristo, hermanos. Uh, praise the Lord, everyone. Estoy muy agradecido con Dios primeramente porque nos permite llegar hasta este día para poder estar aquí en esta plataforma, para poder uh, seguir compartiendo la palabra de Dios contra en, en, en todo el mundo, ¿verdad? Porque sabemos que es, en esta plataforma se puede mirar en todo, en todo, todo lugar. Y es, uh, es algo maravilloso que podemos usar esto para poder así repartir la palabra de Dios. 
Y hermano, créame que todo este día uh, lo he estado esperando, este, este momento lo he estado esperando ansiosamente. Yo sé que el Señor está haciendo grandes cosas. And, uh, you know, I'm just saying that you know, it's, I've been waiting for this moment all day and it's just been very exciting. And I just come home and I, you know, I, I can already feel the presence of God, you know, I, and you know, just in my prayer before we connected here, it just, it, it's great. And, you know, I want to say to everyone, you know, uh, we miss you guys and, you know, we just hope to be able to embrace each other, you know, really soon. And I just hope that the, uh, the protection and the covering of Jesus is with you guys always. Amen. 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 Um, uh, just before we get into the study, I, I just uh, have a, a couple of announcements that, that I'd like to make. Primero, si comienza, tengo some uh, anuncios. Um, primero, oramos por la familia um, Perez, um, hermana Angelina Perez. Ella falló. Falleció. Falleció um, mm -hmm. en, en este día. Um, let's keep the Perez family in prayer. Um, Sister Angelina Perez passed away. Um, today, and so our hearts are really heavy. Tenemos corazones muy pesados porque cuando los gigantes de la iglesia, verdad, pasan, you know, es, es un poquito, you know, uh, um, se siente, no sé, no miedo, pero hay esto, you know, esto, persona estuvo todo ese tiempo aquí. Um, it's a little rattling. I have to be honest. I feel a little rattled when um, you know one of the pillars of the church passes away, because um, it means that younger ones have to t <laughs> have to become pillars. <laughs> and so let's yes. let's um let's just pray for the for the um, Betis family, and also for um, this lesson. So I'm I'm going to ask uh, Brother Gustavo. Gustavo, why don't you just say a prayer for the Perez family and, and for the Central Church because we have to mourn, you know, ourselves. Um, you know, we can't gather in the church, and and so so just pray for us. Pray for the Perez family and um, in Jesus' name. Amen. Vamos a orar, hermano. Let's pray. Señor Jesús, te damos gracias porque tú eres grande y tú eres fiel. God, you're so faithful, you're so good. Señor, y en estos momentos de dificultad que está pasando, tanto la familia Pérez como la iglesia, no solamente de nosotros, sino iglesias a nivel mundial, Señor. Pido que nos ayudes a siempre ser sensitivos a tu voz. Esa voz que nos ayuda, que nos afirma, que nos deja saber que tú eres fiel que tú eres bueno, que tú eres poderoso, que nos amas y que tú tienes todo bajo control. En este momento, Señor, pido que bendigas a toda la familia Pérez, Señor, y les des fuerza y les ayudes, Señor, les bendigas, que ellos reconozcan y se den cuenta, Señor, que tú fuiste el Dios de, su, de la hermana Pérez y que tú vas a seguir siendo Dios de ellos y por medio de eso somos bendecidos, Señor. Pido que nos ayudes en la iglesia como iglesia y danos la fuerza, Señor, Para, para ser sensitivos y ayudar y apoyar en este tiempo de necesidad. No solamente a la familia, sino aún a nosotros mismos. Pero te damos gracias más que nada por este tiempo. Que ayúdanos, Señor, a, a, a bastarnos de tu gracia. Esto te pedimos en el nombre de Jesús. Y te damos la honra Amen. y la gloria. Amen. 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 Um, otro an anuncio. Todo, todo esto uh, mes de mayo. Uh, Quiero de todos nosotros de iglesia puedes orar y en ayunar um, todos los miércoles solo para estar you know, fuerte en Cristo y también um, solo para ayudar nuestro mundo, nuestra situación. En el Dios quiere en junio si puedes estar juntos otra vez en nuestra iglesia, pero solo Dios sabe. Um, also, just, just to make mention that um, we've designated um, the um, every Wednesday of May to fasting and praying. So we'd love to have you join in. It's just to fortify us as a church, ourselves, of course, praying for our situa 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 situation. And, um, and also, if the Lord wills, only he knows if we could go back to church uh, in June. So let's do that. If you could just fast, como tú quieres, como tú llenar todos los días, solo un, you know, un, un uh, cena o un, no sé, 
como, como Dios um, uh, leads you to, to, to fast, please, please do that. But why don't we go ahead and just get, get into um, our, our lesson today. Um, like I had mentioned, we're going to be talking from the book of Mark, chapter 12, verses 28 um, through 31. Eso es nuestra escritura en es, por eso mes, Marco 12, 28 a 31. And um, this, this, this chapter, chapter 12, is actually part of a block of three chapters, 11, 12, and 13. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a block that um, Jesus is... Uh, um, speaking in Jerusalem, uh, and but also speaking to his disciples about the last days or the days coming, um, possibly in preparation to after he resurrects. So, um, esto, um, de esto contexto, de esto capítulo, es hay, 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 tres, hay tres capítulos, um, 11, how do you say 11? 11. 11, 11 12, 12 y 13. 13. 13 son esos tres capítulos que Cristo está uh, enseñando allí en la ciudad de Jerusalén y también está hablando con los discípulos de los uh, últimos días, the, the, last, the last days. And uh -huh. so, so chapter 12, Jesus is in, in, in chapter 12, he is, he's having this discussion, really this argument, discussion with the religious leaders who continually try to um, try to trap Jesus by saying certain things about, you know, uh, you know, about paying taxes to Rome. They were trying to trap him by saying, oh, so you support Rome if you pay ta taxes. And so they were trying to, to trap him. Also, they were trying to trap him on the idea of that there is no resurrection because The Sadducees didn't believe, or part of the religious leaders did not believe in the resurrection. So this is what chapter 12 is about. Eso hay una discusión con uh, um, Jesús está hablando con los religiosos uh, mm -hmm. judíos en nice. este tiempo. En ellos están, um, ellos tienen, uh, I'm, I'm struggling with Spanish today. Um, they want to test him. Um, Quieren probarlo. Probarlo. Están hablando de la resurrección. La resurrección. Pagando la gobierno a Roma. Y, uh, and so this is this is the this is the challenge that that's going on in 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 chapter 12. But when we get to to the verses that we're talking about, um, there is a scribe. A scribe is someone who was um, knew the law, interpreted the law, or uh, um, copied the law. So they knew the law. And, they, and he actually asks a sincere question um, uh, uh, of Jesus, uh, um, not being hostile. And, and he's, he's asking about the first principles of God, which was a known debate with all the religious leaders. And so um, can somebody translate me? That would be just great. <laughs> Okay, uh, I'm trying to put something here. <laughs> okay, uh, uh, entonces estaba, estaba discutiendo en cuanto a la resurrección con todos estos líderes religiosos, es lo que estaba haciendo uh, más bien este, este uh, Jesús cuando llegó el escriba y le hizo, le hizo una pregunta muy interesante a Jesús uh, en medio de esta, de esta discusión que él estaba teniendo con todos esos uh, Uh, fariseos y saduceos, líderes religiosos. Yeah, so, um, so this is in, in the verses that we're talking about, this is what, um, this is Jesus's response. So I'm going to read it um, in, in English, and um, one of my brothers is going to put it up in Spanish there in the feed. So it says this, it says, one of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another, and seeing that he, being Jesus, he, Jesus, answered them well, He asked him, which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, the first is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself, and there is no other commandment 
greater than these. So um, those that are familiar know that Jesus, for the most part, is, is quoting um, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 and 5. A los, que, a los que se familiarizan con esto, uh, se dan cuenta que Jesucristo está mencionando Deuteronomio capítulos 4 y 5. Um, which is, you know, is considered when, when Moses was giving the commandments to, to Israel. Que es considerado de cuando Moisés le dio los mandamientos a Israel. And so there's been always a lot of debate or things said about the commandments, what the commandments mean, how are the commandments, how are we supposed to live by the commandments. In truth, Moses, well, of course, God gave them to Moses. Moses telling the people is basically instructing them to have this devoted life to God once they get to the promised land. Entonces, uh, uh, este debate en cuanto a la ley, lo que tiene que hacerse en cuanto a la ley siempre ha existido. Y, y lo que la ley de Moisés dio, ¿verdad? Y entonces, aquí lo que está diciendo Jesús es mencionando en cuanto a lo que es la ley y lo que la ley significa para Dios y para poder llegar al reino. And so, really, it's, it's this instruction. We, we know that um, uh, is, um, uh, you know, the commandments were of God to, to separate the people of Israel from the other nations. It was also to, to guide them because they were the chosen people at that time to, to show the world that, listen, there's this God, this supernatural God that you don't see, no statues, no nothing, that literally has this um, connection with, with these people in the desert. Uh, 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 uh. Y en sí que estos mandamientos no fueron dados no solo para separar a la gente de Israel de las otras naciones, pero para también para ayudarles, para, para demostrarles que en sí ellos eran una nación diferente y que Dios iba, iba a estar habitando con ellos en medio de Israel. I don't know if somebody wants to speak to that, uh, just about, in a sense, uh, you know, a separation, because in a sense, that's that's what Jesus is also. I, we're talking about Deuteronomy right now, but Jesus is also, you know, he's saying this to not only the religious leaders, but also to the disciples, you know, in this three block, you know, chapters of look at there's going to have to be some sort of devotion to God beyond how it is right now or differently, I should say, than how it is right now. And, and then he lays it out. And we'll, we'll, we'll briefly break the whole scripture down. But, but yeah, I'm just wondering if someone would like to speak to that. A, a mí me parece muy interesante el hecho de que, de que Jesús haya estado en medio de, de esta enseñanza y a la vez poniéndose en un debate en medio de los fariseos, los seduceos, los escribas y, y, y a la vez también gente como pescadores, agricultores o, o, o pastores que estaban ahí en ese momento mirando, yo pienso que si yo hubiera sido uno de ellos, me hubiera, hubiera, me hubiera capturado la atención de lo que ellos estaban debatiendo, porque hablando de algo tan importante como la ley, yo pienso que los oyentes estaban petrificados porque decían, esto está fuera de nuestro alcance para poder responder. You know, I'm saying, putting myself in the uh, and that and that situation, it would it would have been very interesting for someone to be in the middle of that, of that debate, uh, as far as uh, be, uh, watching the uh, Pharisees and the uh, Sadducees and, and the scribes and Jesus there speaking to them, and and you know at the same time surrounded by shepherds, by by uh, fishermen, by by agriculture, you know them listening to them, and at the same time like petrified, so afraid or even uh, of even being able to. Come to comment uh, anything that has to do with the law uh, imagine that just to just to, just the feeling of i don't want to say something that is going to get me stoned to death imagínense estar ahí a medias y decir yo no quiero decir algo que me vayan a que me vaya a causar que me apedrien a muerte porque estoy hablando a uh, referente a la a la ley de Moisés pero este Jesús con cuánta autoridad está mencionando esto yeah. um pastor una lo que se me hace muy interesante 
what I think is very interesting about this also how you were talking about the law or, or it was used in, in it for separation, right? Like the Ten Commandments and stuff. Uh, it reminds me of a particular scripture where Jesus was with his, with his disciples and, uh, and he told his disciples make referencing or making reference to the Pharisees, right? And he says, listen to what they teach or what they teach is good, but don't do the things that they do, right? right. So because Jesus knew, right, that the Pharisees were always, they always use the law to elevate themselves, to make it seem like they get there, right? And to make themselves better, look better as if they had a higher favor with God and whatnot. But at the same time, the same law that they used to elevate the, themselves is the same law that Jesus used to say, look, you guys are not even keeping it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's, that's a good, that's a good point. You know, that's a good point because in, in truth, in, in when the law was established in, you know, I, I always paint the law as a negative thing because of the time that we're living in. We have Jesus. We, we don't need the law, the 10, you know, the, the 613 laws of, of, you know, the, of the Mosaic law. And so, but, you know, there was a purpose for it in, in the desert. And uh, when Israel was there, and even when they went in, into the promised land, we know Paul says it was just a schoolmaster, right? Or a teacher pointing to the Messiah. So it was just kind of like a sign. <laughs> the commandments was like a sign going this way, Jesus this way, Jesus this way, because mm -hmm. he's the one that is going to, he fulfills the law. I also just think it's just throwing it out there. I think it's interesting that, you know, Jesus does away with the commandments. Um, and they're asking him, what are the greatest commandments? And he has this, this, this answer, but, and that could be mis, misconstrued. I, I'd like to hear someone's opinion on that. It could be kind of twisted because it's like, you know, he's just saying, it's, it's not that you follow the law because the things that he's talking about are, are, are things of the heart. You know, these, you know, you know, hero Israel, the Lord, our God is, is one Lord, you know, um, you, you know, uh, 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 you know, you know, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. All of these things aren't, you know, we wear certain, you know, clothes like they had to, right? A certain only one thread, uh, you know, eating certain food and all this stuff that were outwardly. But here, Jesus is talking about inward stuff. But I, I'd like to hear someone. I don't know. Pastor, uh, one thing I found interesting was just that reflection of that is it's almost as if these people who devoted themselves to like concrete my life is every aspect of the law possible and i'm gonna live wholeheartedly through it and reflect it they're coming to jesus as if knowing like hey like you're trying to like denounce everything or in their eyes maybe you're trying to denounce everything that we've like built our lives around so when they come to him asking this what i love about it is like jesus understands like the importance that played in their lives. That's why he echoes back to Deuteronomy, echoes backwards of Moses. And what I like is how the scripture that the month is based on is all, if you look at it entirely, it's all the basic principle of the reasons of the 10 commandments, like that we all know a person foremost, where the, the focus of it is to love God above all else. But the verbiage isn't like, you know, you shall not have any gods before me, you shall not this, just, just give God your all. And then love your neighbors and that's what i like about it he's like look i'm not saying that what you were basing your life on is incorrect i'm just saying that that's not where the focus is supposed to be it's supposed to be towards this instead yeah yeah good point i like how i like how like you asked they asked that question you know on in verse verse 28 where uh, it says which of the first com uh, which is the first command of all cuál es el primer mandamiento de todos you know, when it, when when I see that that that, that part of that scripture, you know, it's, it brings to me like an idea of like, you know, they they're they're wanting to know, you know, uh, at that point, you know, more about God. You know, they they they're wanting to know more about what He has to say. You know, quieren saber más de, de, de Dios, quieren saber más de lo que él les tiene que decir, quieren aprender. And and then when He starts going on saying, 
you know, the first commandment is, you know, here Israel, Lord, our God, the Lord is one, you know, it's just reaffirming, you know, it's just, you know, I am your God, you know, the, you know, the, you know, I, and I'm the only one, you know, so, so it's, it's, it's pretty, I, to me, it's, it's almost ex- self-explanatory in a way because it's, it's, it's just, it's bold, you know, it's, uh, it's, Está, está en, en, uh, resaltando ese, ese, ese verso donde, donde nos dice que el, el Señor nuestro Dios, el Señor uno es, es el único Dios y no hay ningún otro Dios más que Él. Yeah. Can, I, can I steer things up a little bit faster? Oh, please do. Ok, voy a, voy a, voy a batir esto un poquito. So, uh, uh, Here we go. Yeah. Uh, so, lo, lo, lo importante de esto es que, que nos damos cuenta que lo que estos líderes religiosos estaban buscando era la ocasión para matar a Jesús, ¿ok? Yeah. What we need to realize is that what these uh, religious leaders were looking for was the occasion to kill Jesus. Right. It's kind of like the, uh, like the question is that, uh, ¿a quién debemos de servir? Who should we serve? Uh, uh, God or, 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 or Caesar, you know, it's, it, ¿a quién debemos servir? ¿A Dios o a César? Entonces, es, eran preguntas trampas para atrapar al Señor. Pero a, con esto también podemos ver la mentalidad de la ley en los líderes religiosos, que esa misma mentalidad, en cierta forma, se manifiesta en nuestro tiempo. Because it's almost like the same mentality it reflects even in our time. Because in the last lesson that we had, we got a little bit into the law, and, it started, and we started talking about how some people really takes takes it under their skin, knowing that 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 the grace came to uh, not to abolish it but to fulfill it, and, and at the same time to open the door for us to to be able to make it. Entonces, lo, uh, lo que estoy diciendo que que uh, que esa ley que por la cual estaba aconteciendo en ese tiempo por la cual todos ellos debatían es ese mismo tipo de ley que existe el día de hoy. Es ese mismo tipo de ley que muchos la tienen bajo la piel y la tienen arraigada, que quieren cumplirla, siendo que la gracia ya está puesta. Y eso es una de las cuestiones, uh, una de las cosas por la cual en nuestro estudio pasado comenzamos a platicar de esto. ¿Por qué? Porque se, eh, empezamos a adentrarnos un poquito a la ley y, y esta ley es la que, nos, la que nos mueve a querer, aunque tengamos la gracia, Ay, pareciera como que si queríamos cumplirla una vez más y así como este escriba a preguntar bueno, ¿cuál es el mejor de, de todos los mandamientos? ¿con cuál de ellos tengo la mejor chance? which is the best of these commandments? which, which of these commandments is going to open the door a little bit for me to go into heaven? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's, that, that's good I, I like the point that, that you made because, you know, we, we did spend a month you know, talking about in the book of Romans and where, you know, as we came to the end, it might have been our last study where we pretty much said, listen, we we have always put the focus on ourselves. What do we do to be saved in a sense? Like, uh-huh. and if it was by works or this, that or the other. And we said, look, the, all the work has been done by Jesus Christ. And I think and please correct me, any one of you, just because I just this thought came to me right now is all that work that he did that we talked about, you know, death, burial, resurrection, you know, we're dead to sin, all, all of that, all is the effect of the work of Jesus. But it, let me, I'll ask you the question instead of making the statement. So is, is, is what Jesus saying, is he saying that this should be our response to the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus? And now knowing that our sins are forgiven. Because all of these things, as I've mentioned, are from our hearts. Am I going to love the, am I going to serve only one God, right? That's that hero Israel, our Lord, our, is, we're only going to serve one God, no other gods, not even ourselves. So it, could we loosely or safely say that what Jesus is saying should be our response to the work of the cross and the burial and, and the resurrection? I believe so, because, I mean, again, like the whole approach of this is, as Brother Vargas was pointing out, like they're coming to him, whether it's the intent behind it, whether it's a malicious, like let's get him to trip up and be super blasphemous so we can easily kill him, no questions asked, or whatever purpose the focus is, like, all right, you're preaching about 
this salvation and this life with God. So I feel like Jesus's response to their inquiry of which commandment is greatest is exactly that. The response of now that we're covered under grace and now that this is being done, this is how we respond to it. Where it's like now we're able to love God wholeheartedly because there's no more veil. There's no more separation. There's grace and liberty between us and God. All that's there is just space and opportunity, as they say. Good point. Gustavo. You know, Pastor Bruno, it, let me just let me just make some some let me just paint an, uh, a picture, an illustration. Everyone that kept the law, right, or that pretended to keep the law, looked a certain way and carried themselves a certain way. Yeah. Right? I keep the law. This is what the law says I should look like. This is what the law says I should live like. Right? When Jesus comes in the picture, he presents a new law. Hello. <laughs> yeah. Now, once we understand this law, we're going to begin to look and live in the way that we know to its highest form, in its highest form, in its highest presentation, which is Jesus Christ. Yeah. So in essence, what I'm saying is that once we come to understand this, that God wants us to love him above everything. And God wants us just, just, just the greatest commandment of all to love God, right? Mm -hmm. With all our heart, mind, and soul. And to love our neighbor, or our neighbor as ourselves. Christ is inviting us not just to keep a law and become like the Pharisees that though they knew all the law back and forth, Moses and everything, the Ten Commandments, they lack the spiritual insight to understand it. Mm. We have been given that. Christ is inviting us not only to love people, love people that we don't even know, or, or perhaps a God that we have never even seen, but God's inviting us to, Christ is inviting us to come and, and look more like him. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I agree with that. I, I really do. It, it really is a whole, it really is a whole, um, transformation in a sense of how God um, interacted with people or the lack of interacting with people during the law and all of that. And then with Jesus, where the whole dynamic really is changed because, you know, the element of sin is out of the way. And now the, the very thing that is um, has been placed in us, right? That we're designed is to worship God, and and now that now that the work of it, or the trying to prove that we can't do it ourselves, that's part of what the law did as well, to show us that we could not follow the law. Um, you 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 error in one, you error in all. Paul says, and so. And now we have this new dynamic where Christ has done the work. We've established that. And, and, and now we just have to, you know, uh, receive it and receive it. But with all our, you know, with all that we have, our whole selves, and we could look at that, you know. Um, you know, just starting with, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Well, this for the Jewish people, this is this is Shema. part of the, the Shema, which is, you know, if you are a righteous or if you are a right Jewish person in the sense of orthodox, you, you are going to say the Shema twice a day. You're going to say it in the morning. You're going to say it at night. And here, O Israel, the Lord our God is just one part of it. There's actually three verses from the Pentateuch. The Pentateuch is just the first four books of the Bible that are, are, are attributed to Moses. And so, so literally for some, a, a Jewish person, hero Israel, the Lord, you know, our God is, is one. That's, it's, it's a big deal because it, it, um, it, it encapsulates, right? It, it brings, it envelopes what? The, the whole monotheistic essence of, of Judaism. And what that means is, is it's just saying, look, at, in this one statement, it's saying, listen, we as Jewish, 
for us as Pentecostals slash apostolics, we, you know, there is one God and, and that one God, he is Lord. And it, this is, this is a stretch and it may be even blasphemy to, to some Jewish people, but it, it, it's, it's, it, it, it's almost like a confession of faith, right? You know, we're like, raise your hand, make a confession of faith. Well, for a Jewish person, they're con every time they say it, they're confessing. They're confessing that, A, I'm Jewish, and that the Lord is, is one. Now, for us, that this is not a law. We, we know this very well because we know that Jesus is God. And... And that separates us from a lot of people or separates us from a lot of, you know, others that, that believe in God. I mean, uh, lo, que, lo que está diciendo nuestro pastor es que, que uh, básicamente eh, este, 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 estas palabras, verdad, que a las que está refiriendo Jesús, hoy, hoy Israel, el Señor nuestro Dios, el Señor uno es, uh, no solamente está identificando la unicidad de Dios al decirlo estas palabras, pero esas palabras tal vez, tal vez en cierta forma la, alguna persona judía las va a considerar profanas si se, si, si se dice, si las decimos de esta manera, por decir así, de que, de que para ellos sea una, como una declaración de fe, como un tipo de rezo, ¿verdad? Porque es algo que ellos dicen, estas palabras las dicen en la mañana, entonces las mencionan durante el día, Hoy Israel, nuestro Jehová, nuestro Dios, Jehová uno es, el Señor nuestro Dios, el Señor no es, es como una profesión de fe, algo que se dice, pero, pero para nosotros, nosotros ya lo hemos sabido eso, ya lo hemos entendido, ¿verdad? De que, de que Dios es uno y que solamente uno hay. Entonces, entonces este, nosotros lo podemos, lo podemos entender eso uh, claramente. Right, exactly. <laughs> Someone else? I mean, I, yeah, I want to chime in on, uh, in the part where it says, love the Lord God with all your heart and all your soul. You know, donde dice, amarás a, a tu Dios, a Señor tu Dios con todo tu corazón y toda tu alma. You know, it's, it, it, we know a verse that, that, is, uh, that says, you know, I love the Lord because the Lord loved me first. Uh, you know, amo al Señor porque el Señor me amó primero, ¿verdad? Pero cuando miramos este, este verso, uh, sabemos de que Dios nos, nos ha amado tanto para poder dar su vida y, y darlo todo por nosotros, ¿verdad? Uh, que nos pide que, que como, está, como han dicho nuestro hermano Vargas, es como un acto de fe para decir, yo amo al Señor. Uh, mi Dios, y, y, es, y es el único Dios al que yo le sirvo, es el único Dios al que yo voy a venir a, a ponerle mis cargas, ¿verdad? It's, it's, it's a, it's like a, the Brother Vargas said, you know, it's, it's, it's an act as, as a faith, when you say, you know, I, I love the Lord, you know, it, it, it's, you know, I truly do, you know, because of, you know, he loved me first, you know, and, and because he loved me first, you know, I, I'm dedicating my life to him as in, 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 in and I'm, I'm dedicating my faith to him, you know, and, and um, it, it's just that that's kind of like what, what I gather from 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 that scripture there. Yeah, no, I, I think I mean, that, I, that that's good. I think um, in Gustavo may know this because I know he took Hebrew, but in, in a, you know, in in, in Deuteronomy in Hebrew, uh, the Hebrew language consists of more things than can be translated because there's it's so to me in depth. Um, but literally it's saying when we say, well, I want to love him with all my heart, like we love our girlfriend or something like that, or our wife or something like, like that. But um, it really means like w with, with the, our, our whole will, like our whole, when it says our whole heart, it means literally our everything. You know, and and a w our will is a part of it because the Lord knows, like, and a lot of us know, like, we could be really stubborn, right? That's that's our will. So if we if we if we love the Lord and with our whole being, our whole will, this is this is what this is what He's talking about because 
if if um if we give ourselves entirely to God, you know, really, it's not giving; it's responding to His love. That's really what it is. It's not like okay, you know, tit for tat. It it it's it's it, it's this expression for the Jewish people. It was this expression of a person's foolish me, fullest fullest measure of loyalty to God. So to say, here's my whole will, here's my whole life, here's my whole heart. However, we, whatever vernacular we use, we're literally saying, this is what my loyalty to God looks like in the sense of because of what he's done for us. Uh, the, um, you know, uh, Alberto, you mentioned, and it was mentioned a couple of times, how God first loved us. And that's what it is. It's God first loved us. So how do we respond to that? Here? It's saying dice, wholeheartedly. Dice nuestro pastor que uh, como como Gustavo Gustavo tú estudiaste hebreo y tú puedes uh, interpretar que, que que la palabra en hebreo se se extiende eh, eh, en varias formas también, verdad? Para decir las manos, señor, con todo tu corazón, con toda tu alma, con todas tus fuerzas. No precisamente como uno ama a la novia, verdad? Pero a a, a lo que se refiere es a, a Amarle a Dios con toda tu voluntad, porque el judío, el judío ama a Dios con toda su voluntad, con todo lo que es. Eh, todo su voluntad, todo lo pone, lo pone, lo pone, lo pone eh, en cuanto a, a, a su servicio a Dios. Entonces, a nuestro hermano, como nuestro hermano Alberto mencionó también, ¿verdad? Que, que, uh, que el amor, amamos a Dios porque él nos amó a nosotros primero. Uh, a mí me gusta algo también que mencionó Gustavo. I like something that Gustavo mentioned uh, when he was referring uh, uh, to somebody that the appearance of somebody that's trying to fulfill the law uh, uh, compared with somebody that is just just living by grace. You can tell the difference. Se puede mirar la diferencia en cuanto a alguien que, que trata de cumplir la ley y alguien que está viviendo por la gracia. Y algo que podemos nosotros ver es uh, cuando, cuando Jesús está, está refiriéndose a los fariseos y que les dice... Usted, ustedes son como sepulcros blanqueados. You know, I'm, uh, uh, one of the things that uh, Gustavo mentioned is, is uh, when he referred to the law, uh, uh, how some, some people uh, present themselves uh, uh, on what their appearance looked like. Uh, it brought me back to what Jesus said when he was uh, telling the Pharisees, uh, you look like whitewashed stone stones. Se parecen como sepulcros blanqueados. Uh, ¿Por qué decía esto? Porque ellos se vestían con vestiduras blancas con las escrituras bordadas en las orillas de sus mantos. Uh, I mean, they, they dress white with these uh, white robes and scriptures uh, uh, manded into their, into, their, into their garments. And uh, they stood in the corners with their uh, face, with their face, I'm sorry, uh, uh, fasting and all pale, yellow, you know. They wanted the people to see that these were holy men that were consecrated and fasting, but Jesus saw them as whitewashed tombstones. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, lo, estos, estos se ponían en las esquinas con sus vestidos blancos, todos consagrados y con, su, con sus rostros levantados, con, en ayuno, todos pálidos y querían que la gente los mirara, que, mira, que mirara que eran hombres consagrados, ¿verdad? Y a ellos es a los que se refirió Jesús cuando dijo sepulcros blanqueados, porque aunque se miren blancos por fuera, su corazón no estaba con Dios. You know, their, their heart was an ugly God, even though they look white and shiny on the outside, trying to say that they will fulfill the law. Well, we'll see. Okay, may I say something? Um, if we if we if we look if we look at the Ten Commandments and these two commandments that Jesus introduces over here in the, the we read about in the Book of Mark, the first commandment, which is to love your God, covers the first four of the Ten Commandments, right? And the second one, which is to love your neighbor, covers the rest. However, the rest of the commandments in the in, in the in the Ten Commandments are all things uh, or things that say you shall not, thou shall not, thou shall not, you cannot, right? Uh, uh, things that you cannot do and that we're not supposed to do. In this, in, in the book of Mark, in the book of, in the book of Mark, in, in, in this, in this two verses that we read, the heart of this whole entire scripture is love. If you guys can agree with me, you shall love your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and you shall love your neighbor as you love yourself, right? Mm -hmm. And this is the same kind of this, 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 in this word, if I may read a scripture, uh, 
which is in Galatians chapter uh, chapter 5 and verse 14. It says, for all the law is fulfilled in one word. Even in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if we also go to James chapter 2, verse 8, listen to this. I find this very cool. If you really fulfill the royal, the royal law, according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. <laughs> so the Ten Commandments say, you shall not. Love says... Or, or, or the commandment, the new royal law that Jesus uh, introduces, you shall. You shall love. You shall love. You shall follow my example. You should follow my lead. Yeah, that's, that's really good. I mean, you, you know, you just, you, you sharing that it just made me, you know, think about, you know, as we were, you know, talking about just you know with all our heart with all our will with all our you know strength and and it just has it as it goes on and um you know i i've always wondered like you know do we as individual christians and um, not necessarily as a church but as individual christians like do we do we not see like the supernatural acts of god or or signs and wonders or just his voice or in that because maybe we hold ourselves back. Like, do we deny ourselves? Because, right, I, I totally agree with what you're saying, Gustavo. Do we deny ourselves the full, sum, I don't know how any other way to say it, the full submersion in, into God? So, like, if I keep, and it's a lifetime of, of living for God. It's not like, you know, boom, bang, bing, and we're, you know, Christians, it's this whole life of just transformation, maturing, metamorphosis, all this stuff in our lives. But, but, you know, it, it, do we, I guess I'm asking the question, do we not see God the way we like to see him or want to see him or are told that we could see him, right? You know, you shall drink any deadly thing and it shall not harm you. You shall pick up serpents and uh, you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover uh, just uh, all of these really super supernatural things that we as Pentecostal and apostolic say, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then where is it in my life? Is it because I'm not fully embraced the love of God? Someone help me. Amen. Well, I, I, I just want to piggyback on, on what Gustavo was saying and what you just said, Pastor. You know, because I think that the main th main thing here is is like uh, Gustavo said is is love, right? And if we look in Corinthians thirteen, you know, it, it says it tells us there if I don't have love, I I am nothing. You know, I can have here. Let me just read this this little piece here. It says, and uh, and though I have faith, so that I could remove mountains, but not have love, I am nothing. Mm. And so, so here it's like, and now I ask, I ask the question. It's like, do we only love God when He's doing something for us, or, or is that love continuous? Like, like, the, like the Lord is telling us in Mark twelve. You know, I, I, I feel like what God is really trying to tell us here, on in Mark twelve on, uh, on, in, uh, chapter, uh, or excuse me, Mark twelve verse, uh, verse thirty is that love the lord always right always it, it's not it's not just okay i love the lord because i'm going through the situation and i need him right now and and this is the time that i need to seek him because i need him to do something no it's it's love the lord all the time regardless of you know whether you're in the storm or if everything is going good you know it, it's 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 that love towards god that's going to you know allow us to continue to walk in his path and with, without veering off into a different path, you know, it, 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 and that's the, that's the secureness, you know, it's, it, it's like, and I'll say this again, I might sound like a broken record, you know, it's, it, but it's, I can't love God just because he's done something for me. You know, I got to love God because I know that he's, he's my protection. He's my protector. 
and and he he is my my God. He is man. I just <laughs> yeah. It's a you know it's man. a power it's a powerful point. And just just because Alberto you brought it up, um, you know in First Corinthians thirteen, of course we know it as the love chapter. But a lot of times what's missed is is that in chapter twelve he talks about the gifts of the spirit, the gifts that he's given to all the church. And in chapter 14, he resumes the conversation on the gifts. But none of that matters, like you just said, Alberto, none of that matters if we don't have love. But it's, it's this love, it's the love of God. A lot of times we, we think it's emotionally a love, like I've got butterflies towards the Lord. But it's this understanding, it's this embracing what God has done for us and you know, surrendering, you know, to him uh, so we could, you know, see these things. So though I'm asking the question, hey, why don't we see supernatural things in my everyday life where Jesus's response would be, well, bro, do you love me? You know? <laughs> yeah, man. And it's like, it's like, it's like him saying, do you love me? It's, it's, it's more like, you know, do you love me? Do you trust me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Y, 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 lo, y lo tremendo de esto, y si me permiten brincar aquí, lo tremendo de esto es que hay mucha, hay mucha gente eh, eh, en este momento que uh, le tiene más temor a Dios que amor. Y por causa de ese temor, no se acercan a Él. You know what I'm saying? That, and that there's a lot of people at this moment that they fear the Lord more than they love Him because uh, uh, you can tell that by that fear, they don't, they're afraid to approach Him. Ellos, uh, gente que miran a Dios como que si Dios fuera un juez que los va a castigar, que, lo, que, que, que él está nomás esperando que alguien diga algo malo para castigarlo, como el día de hoy eh, escuché a alguien decir, esta persona está pasando por esto porque Dios la está castigando. No saben lo que están diciendo. You know, today I heard somebody saying, God is punishing these people because of what, 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 what they're done. And, and they don't know what they're talking about when they say that. Uh, a lo que se refiere es, a lo que está refiriendo es que tienen más temor a Dios que amor. Entonces, uh, el, el que le tiene amor a Dios soporta la reprensión de él. He that loves the Lord more, it, it can actually uh, 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 take him uh, reprehension. Uh, es como el apóstol, el apóstol a Pedro. Señor, la gente se está yendo, les estás hablando muy fuerte. You know, Lord, people are beginning to leave. They're, 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 look at, they're walking out the door. You're speaking too hard. You, you can take off as well. Le dijo, Jesús, tú también te puedes ir si quieres. Mm -hmm. ¿A quién más iremos si solamente tú nos ofreces palabras de vida eterna? Who else should we go to if you only offer us uh, words of eternal life? So, my point is that uh, at this moment, because of what we see that is happening, what is all around us, people are more afraid uh, 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 of thinking that, that God is going to do something against them uh, instead of saying, you know what? Let us let us come to God because He loves us first. Let let let, let us let us be uh, let, let us love Him. Vamos a venir a Dios porque nos amó primero a nosotros. Vamos a venir para que para amarle a él porque yo sé que de alguna manera él nos va a librar nosotros. God is gonna set us free. Entonces con esto le dije a, le dije a un compañero en el trabajo el día de hoy uh, uh, le dije súbete a tu máquina con cuidado. Y, y me contestó, dice, sí, no me quiero caer porque si me muero, es, eso va a estar muy mal. You know, I told him, get your machine. Just be careful. He says, yeah, because if I fall and if I die, that's going to be very bad. And I told him, you know what? Don't worry about it. If you're here, God is with you. And if you're not here, you're with him. Le dije, no te preocupes. Si estás aquí, Dios está contigo. Y si no estás aquí, tú estás con él. Ese es el amor. Que le amemos a él primero porque él nos amó a nosotros. Amen. So inclusive, you know, it's so inclusive, so radical, yeah. uh, so scandalous, like the word that I love that Daniel uses a lot to this, what he's talking about. His love is so scandalous, so radical. It'll go places where perfection will never go. Nothing will ever go as far, as hard, as intentional, as life-changing as love will. 
and I believe when this is this is one of the greatest things that God left for us. Eso es algo de lo más hermoso que Dios pudo haber dejado su amor para enseñar para una nueva manera de vivir. Fue lo que él introdució en, en el tiempo que él estuvo en la tierra. Una nueva forma de vivir, de amar, porque de ahí para allá antes no se escuchaba, era raro. Era raro eso. Right? Yeah, it's I have just, a little, it's just um, oh, I'm, so, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, I just want to share something really quick with you, Pastor. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you met her. I, ha I have a little niece that I remember the first time she came to visit us. Uh, uh, everybody grows up different, uh, different in their own homes. Uh, tengo una sobrinita que hace tiempo vino a visitarnos y todos crecen diferentemente en sus casas. Pero esta, esta sobrinita, el día, el, el tiempo que estuvo con nosotros, mi esposa y yo le, le, le lo que hicimos siempre, siempre la quisimos, la abrazábamos, le dábamos besos y, y ella volteaba y nos miraba y decía, ¿por qué haces esto? Esto es raro. Uh, se siente muy raro que, me, que, que alguien me quiera. You know, she was, she was actually feeling awkward. She said, why are, you, why are you loving me? Why are you doing this? Why are you kissing me? Why are you hugging me? What, why are you doing this? She was actually feeling strange with love. But at the, at the end, she became very lovable herself. El último día se volvió bien amorosa. Yeah, I think I I think it's yeah it's true. It's just um, uh, first of all, I love the way this conversation you know just <laughs> unfolded because we're you know we're starting with the law, but really we're ending up exactly where 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 we should. And really, what just keeps coming to my mind it, right now is just the relentless love of God. You know, where He just He Amen. pursues 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 us you know and um and just no matter how much of a loser we think we are no matter how a mess we've made of things of our life how we continue to live in a mess what what whatever it just his relentless 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 you know love where there's no end there's no one could be so bad that god is not going to pursue them and um and and overtake them you know and uh, so that they can be set free you know it's just and some of us are have harder heads than others but you know eventually if we really sincere with ourselves we you know we begin to be you know absorbed or we begin to you know really allow ourselves to to um have God's love penetrate our hearts, you know, in our lives. Amen. Do you have a point, Amen. Daniel? Um, I was going to say, I like uh, the example Jose was giving uh, about his niece and all that, because that isn't a, like, very, like, nice and simple, just straightforward reflection of how God is with us, just like you guys are saying, relentless and scandalous and reckless is his love as it consistently pursues us and it consistently comes after us like it says in romans you know nothing in all his creation can separate us from his love and we don't understand that type of love and back to your question that you brought up of you know the fact that we don't see some of the things that we've read about in the bible like you know the abilities the things that god's people have been able to do because of their in a sense they're just uh, reciprocation of his love and all that but I think it all comes with understanding who he is and what he is and like the aspect of his love towards us like as we begin to understand like there is this God who created everything yes we know that cool there's this God who oversees and has all power all knowledge and all this and that awesome right on but yet he desires to have this intimacy and this relationship and this connection with you an individual to which no one else can compare when you really start to dive into it. And that's where it starts to get confusing to us because if I can be honest, I think it falls under a partial of our self-image, self-worth, where it's like, how can I be lovable when A, B, C, X, Y, Z has happened in my life? How can I be so desired when all these other things are wrong in my life and all that? And yet God is still there loving up on us, hugging up on us in ways that we feel we don't deserve, but we are told we don't deserve. 
yet God is like, you're perfect in my eyes, and I'm going to keep loving on you, and Amen. you're going to end up just hopefully one day reciprocating it, and even if you don't, I'm still going to love on you. And that's what I think is cool about God is that he's just consistently going to be there. And then the moment we start to understand it and respond to it and reciprocate it is the moment those supernatural things that you were referring to start to become not so supernatural and become our natural, you know, or it becomes our everyday, you know, it's um like the book that we read years ago, the um, ordinary radicals, right? That phrase where it's just, it's so radical to everybody else, but it's ordinary in the sense because it's our everyday. Like, this is how we are. This is how we live. This is our normal. This is our 24 seven. And that's the beauty of God is that that's his 24 seven, that unyielding, relentless love. Yeah, me gustaría saber qué es lo que, qué es lo que dicen los que nos están mirando. A mí, si tienen alguna pregunta, algún comentario, nos gustaría que pusieran su comentario ahí para que para que también este nosotros pudiéramos mirar su punto de vista. Uh, we would love to see your comments. We would like to see if you have a point of view, you know, uh, to uh, everything that we're talking because it is so good to hear from somebody else, but it's also good to hear from you or to or, or to see what you what your point of view is. Es, es bueno escuchar de alguien más, pero también es bueno mirar tu, el punto de vista de ustedes que nos están acompañando en este momento. Y, 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 y les agradecemos mucho que, que, que también estén a, sean parte de, de, de esta familia y de este, de este tema tan importante, ¿verdad? Este this awesome team that, that the pastor brought for, for us to, to, to talk about us. Uh, here, Urshel, the Lord is one. El Señor es uno. Yo, eh, 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 nuestro Dios es uno. Dios uno es. Entonces, no amar, no amar otros dioses más que un solo Dios. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's 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 true. Um, we can wait to see if there's a, a, a someone asks a question, but for the most part, we we pretty much have come to the end of our time. Of course, unless someone has a question, and so we'll just continue this, this discussion. This is I this is literally the introduction. Next week, one of the other uh, uh, teachers will will lead us into their thoughts about it. We didn't even. I mean, there's so much here. There's just so so much here that we could we could talk about. And so, um, yeah. But uh, with that, I, I think we could uh, go ahead and just close up. Just want to make a, a reminder that you know, of course, this Sunday we'll be um, have our Mother's Day. It's already Mother's Day. We'll have a Mother's Day service, a virtual Mother's Day service. Lord willing, it'll be a blessing um, to you. And uh, with some, we have some specials uh, that are, are, are being prepared. And, and so we're just going to do our best to celebrate our, our mothers this, this, this Sunday. And also, again, just to remember that, um, you know, every Wednesday this month, we're just fasting uh, all day or a couple of meals or just, um, just we're fasting to just continue to unite, strengthen ourselves as we're separate, but then also for, for our world. So. Este domingo tenemos un, un culto muy especial por los madres, um, una celebración, es primero vez, nosotros no estamos en la iglesia, ¿verdad? Uh, con los, nuestros madres, pero, pero así es en estos tiempos, pero nosotros estamos planeando un, un, un culto muy especial, con un canto especial, otro, otro cosa, so, uh, es el comité de la 10. Y um, also just again, um, Every, todos los miércoles en este mes tenemos uh, oración en nuestras casas y también ayunar. So join us for, for all of that. But um, if uh, the men have any other comments, we could go ahead and close with a word of prayer. Daniel, you could close this out. And um, Lord willing, we'll see you all soon. Amen. Well, with that, as we said, you know, before, let's keep the Perez family in prayer and our church and just just continue to reflect on God's amazing love like we say there's so many adjectives we can use for it there's so many things we can say about it and thankfully we have other Wednesdays to do so <laughs> so with that let's just go before God vamos a orar levantar la familia de Perez y los hermanos en la iglesia y también todos Hermanos, de necesito o tiene el amor de Dios, en entiende el amor de Dios, en gracias a Dios tiene muchos miércoles de hablar y 
todo estudiar el nombre de Dios y también el amor de Dios. So again, let's just go before God and keep everyone in prayer. It's great to see everybody that we see on here. You know, some of our brethren and some that have just visited or others that are just visiting in this, we thank you all. So let's just go before God. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for bringing us here, God. Thank you for the time together with our brothers, with our leaders, just expanding on your word, expanding our knowledge, not just of your word, not just in study, God, not just understanding the scripture, but understanding your love is what it boils down to, God, because you desire not just a superficial or a surface relationship, Lord, you desire a relationship of depth, a relationship of just truth true foundation love that can't be easily uprooted cannot wither lord god we thank you for this understanding that your love is relentless that your love is unyielding that your love is reckless in ways lord god but the more we understand it the more your love becomes understandable lord god the more things open up the more blessings will pour out in the sense that our lives become that much more bearable that much more understandable lord though we have losses though we suffer pain lord god those we are losing our family members here and there lord god we're grateful to have the blessing of the memory that you left with us of them lord god the blessing of the time with them and we're thankful that those lord god that have come to know you they're going to be with you and we get to all be reunited one day lord god so lord for our brothers and sisters and the perez family lord god i lift them up and just claim your comfort and healing over them that your hand and peace be over them during this lord god we know it's tough especially because we all can't be together but lord let your love and our love pour out upon them lord god for our friends and family that are dealing with this whole entire covid issue issues and interests and all the things that are trying to break us we just claim your victory over it that we're going to stay united and stay focused on you thank you again god for all the blessings and the victories lord god you know the needs and we just claim your hand over them and victory and testimony in jesus name we pray amen god bless all of you and uh, lord willing we'll we'll see you soon and uh, in jesus name god god bless you later everybody god bless you all Dios los bendiga, hermanos. Saludos a todos. Abrazos.